What's going on? It's I from Ask I Solar. In my last video, I talked about this panel right here, me getting it for 20 bucks and being a, a thing that I just couldn't pass on. Uh, I also talked about how I had to decide on getting something to use that power from the sun. And this is what I decided on. Let's talk about it. So basically I got into solar for less than $200 and let me tell you how I got there. So this panel I got from the marketplace, 20 bucks. I had to figure out what I was going to pair this panel with to be able to get energy from the sun and do it ASAP Rocky. Um, so what I decided on was the Bodan's 166 watt hour portable power station this thing cost me about hundred and twenty dollars so the reason why I picked this one is because I'm not a budget guy but I'm value oriented so I wanted to be able to get something that I could just hammer day in and day out as long as the Sun was out this is a 166 watt hour capacity battery it is a lifepo battery which means it lasts about 1000 to 2000 charge cycles compared to other portable power stations which have a different battery chemistry which lasts about 500 charge cycles to 80 percent and what that means is that when you charge deplete charge deplete 500 times you're going to lose the top 20 percent of this battery so i'm not going to do math right now but whatever 80 percent capacity of this is that's what i would end up with after one to two thousand cycles an alternative to this one was the next pile which ran about 99 dollars. the thing that i liked about that because when i first got into solar i wasn't in the mindset for solar i just wanted emergency power and i like that one because you could charge it from a usb c port and it could output from the USB-C port. So it could take 60 watts in, it could put 60 watts out. So if you needed to charge that one quickly, I don't know what the capacity on that one was. was. It was comparable to this one. So let's just say it was like 172 or something like that, I don't know. But it had the 500 charge cycle. So that battery would last me 100% of the time for like maybe a year and a half. Whereas this battery will give me 100% of its power for like five to 10 years. So me being a guy just getting into solar, I needed this long, uh, long lasting battery. So I decided to go with this. I actually almost decided to spend $40 on this MC4 to USB adapter that could plug directly into your solar panels and allow you to charge phones and devices directly from that. I thought that was an easy middle ground, but the value just wasn't there because for an extra 60 to $80, I'd have all this that I could do, which is USB, which is USB, these 5.5 millimeter barrel ports which are interesting i'll maybe talk about that in a different video and i would have ac power so it's like why well, spend 40 dollars on something that only gives me usb when i say only gives you usb it only gives you usb power and while in the sun whereas like this thing has a battery could store that power for later when the sun goes down it was like a no-brainer that thing although i applaud the ingenuity and them servicing people in that capacity, I feel like it was overpriced and it was a, a little bit limited in its power output. I think the highest it went was like 2.4 um, amps. So now that I have this, I have something to use this panel with. I bought a short MC4 extension cable. I believe it was short, it was like 10 foot. And I ended up having to run this basically through my window. I don't even know if it was long enough to get it into the window. No, it wasn't. So I, I had this panel outside and I ran it to this portable power station with my like 10 foot cable and it was summertime. And I, I ran an extension cord from here through my window into my house so that I could be able to power my laptop. And I used to basically sit right here at the door um, to work in the kitchen. And I know that got on my wife's nerves cause I was all in her way, uh, you know, within reason. But man, I was powering my laptop. I was working remotely from the power of the sun. I mean, that's just dope, man. And it's addictive. Let me tell you that, it's addictive. That early in the game, I had no way to measure how much power this panel was putting out. But this particular power station can only take in 45 watts of power. 
you got a 50 watt panel that seemed like a match made in heaven but panels don't put out what they're rated for let me just tell you that it probably puts out about 30 watts hopefully like 40 but i don't know i have tools to measure that now i'll probably measure that in another video and see what it produces so i thought it was a perfect pairing and it worked out well for me man i eventually got to the space where i wanted to do a 100 watt panel and i did upgrade to an hqst 100 watt poly no mono crystalline panel um, i made a unboxing video about that panel if you want to check it out something should pop up on the screen for you right now definitely give that a look there was some controversy in my brain <laughs> not in many other people's brain about whether or not it was a mono panel and not a poly panel and i also talked about that in that video i also reached out to the what are they called i guess the vendor the company to see what they would say um, they did respond and i talked about that in this video so man i was set i had my power i was good to go I upgraded my panel and then what came into the picture it was a 280 some odd watt portable power station 300 watt inverter it was a pure sign inverter and it was deeply discounted because it was a refurbished one I unboxed this device in this video it's gonna pop up around here you can watch that if you want to but now I'm gonna talk about how that kind of came into my system and why I picked that one and decided to purchase that one in the next video about that power station if you made it this far you might as well subscribe and go along for the ride officially and maybe click this video right here